Everyone, welcome to the bottom line, a wrap of the business news of the day. I'm Frances Hurd. And let's start by bringing up a number that will be central to our, our topic tonight, which is prescribed assets. So six trillion rand, that is roughly the amount invested in pension, retirement, investment and life insurance funds in South Africa. And there are rising concerns that this could become basically South Africa's bailout, that retirement funds could be forced to invest in struggling state-owned entities like ESCOM, possibly to the detriment of pensioners. South Africans don't save enough in the first place. And according to economist Mike Schisler, there are about 17 million retirement accounts, though, in the country. So uh, let's discuss this further. Because of those rising fears, the government will tap into pensions, into investments to keep South Africa going. The term prescribed assets refers to a policy where the state obliges institutions such as pension funds and insurance companies to invest a part of their funds in state institutions or government bonds. The ANC resolved at its 2017 conference to investigate new prescribed asset requirements. The call was renewed in the 2019 election manifesto. Then uh, last week Thursday, President Cyril Ramaphosa told Parliament that South Africa must debate the use of prescribed assets to boost economic growth. So what is the view of one of the big fund managers investing retirement funds on behalf of clients? Well, to discuss, we're joined by the Chief Executive Officer of Alexander Forbes, Davi de Villiers. Great to have you with us, Davi. Thank Hello, you for Francis. being uh, here. Let, let's just start with the, the history, because yeah. this was a an apartheid policy. It's not completely new in South Africa. Just, just tell us what happened before. Yeah, well, the first thing one must remember is um, it was long ago, 1956 I think it was implemented. Um, but what we must remember from that time is it was so-called um, defined benefit funds where it is funds that is underwritten by the employer and the employer gives the employee when he reaches retirement a fixed pension. Okay. So it was... Um, so it didn't go up and down with the market? It didn't go up. The underlying investments went up and down with the market, yeah. but it was the corporate, the company that took that um, that risk and not the individual. The individual's pension was, was fixed. Okay. Um, so it was a form of uh, forcing corporates in South Africa at the time to invest in prescribed assets. With um, what consequences? Yeah, so that was actually, if one look, looks back, I think um, rough calculation shows that over that 30-year period when it was implemented, it was almost about 10% per annum that the opportunity cost was, that those assets performed poorer than the assets that the um, companies or the pension funds would have invested yeah. in. And that's a big number. That, that is. So how yeah. worried should uh, people investing, saving right now in South Africa be? Yes, I, I think I think it's it's early stages. There's a lot of fear um, around, and and hence we're having this discussion mm -hmm. for individuals. Because the difference now is that it is actual individuals' money. Pension funds these days, because it's now a defined contribution, it is basically savings accounts of individuals in funds. Yeah. Um, so the vehicle is the fund, but it's basically individuals' money, whether it's through policies or through their employer schemes. And, and I think that is the fear. It's now, it's now every individual's risk. And we must remember that it is a, it is a, a, a sliver. It's a, a sliver of South Africans, the, the whole employed... Um, yeah. Because it, it's not only state Africa. workers. I mean, there has yes, been exactly. talk in the past of, of the PIC, of government, uh, fund, government policy, yeah. government workers' yes, pensions workers pension being, fund, being yes. tapped. But now this would affect everybody, everybody who has a pension fund or a retirement fund. Everybody that's employed or those that are saving through, through other vehicles like the policy. So, so it's, it's basically all savings for retirement. And, and that is, that is much, a much wider um, access that, that, is, that is affected. And I think one must consider that. And um, our view is that it is um, the duty of pension funds, of suppliers like us and of, of uh, trustees, because it's your fiduciary duty to look after the interests of members. And we must just ensure that the members get the best return that they can yeah. get. But does this reduce your ability to, to do that? I mean, the whole risk and reward yeah. Yeah incentive is, is kind of gone it is gone to I an think, extent yes yeah no you're right I, I think what, what happens is if you prescribe then there is too much demand for a certain asset so if a certain asset is prescribed there's just too much demand for that asset and that suppresses the price 
and suppressing the price means that it yields a lower return and that is to the detriment of the member. So that is basically what the argument yeah. is about. Um, what, what, I, what I want to say, and that's, that's, and that's why we can't allow it for individual members for their hard-earned savings to invest in assets that would be um, um, suppressed because of um, prescribing it. Um, but on the upside, and as the, the um, Minister Ramaphosa said, is you want to actually um, invest in South Africa in infrastructure, in social economic environment. You, you want to invest in that because it is good for the upliftment of South Africa. We must just do it in the right way. Yeah. So would Alexander Forbes take a stance on this if, if it's going to be implemented? Would you try and lobby against uh, or, or say this is something we have to accept? No, certainly. I think we, um, we certainly w welcome the speech by, uh, by Mr. Minister Ramaphosa um, last week that, uh, that said that he, he would want to debate it. We certainly welcome that. I think we would be um, opposed against prescription of any form because of the effect that it would have on, on our members. Um, Meaning they will become poorer. They will become in, poorer. In effect, sure. and we don't know by how much, but you have mentioned that that figure during apartheid yes, times yes. about 10%. Yeah. Is there any idea? Uh, no, so we don't know. It depends. Uh, I mean, it's early stages. It's just it's just in the concept. So so one will have to see um, if it goes through, what type of assets is prescribed, and 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 how much, and what portion of the of the funds. Um, I I actually want to say that um, I don't think government intends going there. I don't even think government intends going there. I think we all want um, impact investing. We all want investing that is great for South Africa, that creates employment, that creates infrastructure. Yeah. And, and, and we, we certainly want that and government wants that. And if we just talk and we get together and we can create those type of assets that is the right risk return profile for the members that actually gets them proper returns and that one can choose us whether you want to invest in it because it's your profile or not that would be very successful. I think it's coming up especially because there's this fear of an IMF bailout. Yes. Um, are, are you willing to venture an opinion which would be worse for the ordinary South African yeah. to have some prescribed assets where you have to help state-owned uh, companies uh, with your pension funds or to have an IMF bailout for, for the country to get to that state? Yeah, I, th I think I think both would be would be bad um, for the average South African because it would have dire consequences. Um, but I don't think those are the two answers. I think uh, the bailout um, uh, certainly, my opinion is 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 um, the South African government won't won't go for. We don't need it. It's a totally different situation from other countries that had IMF bailouts with banking crises, which we don't. Our central bank is is is, is a wonderful institution looking looking after after South Africa. So so I don't think we're there with an, a bailout. I think the fear actually comes from the position that ESCOM is even yeah. and the fear that we have to invest in es ESCOM and throw money down a, down a pit. And, and that, that, that is Can the Can these two options be avoided? Yeah, I, th I think um, one, one will need, and that, that is, would be part of the debate. I think um, the debate that South Africans should have is how do we fix ESCOM? And um, a government will have to take a, a stance, mm -hmm. um, do the right thing, make the policy decisions, and do the right thing for the country with regards to um, solving ESCOM's problems. If, if we land up having to speak about prescribed assets again, if, if this carries yes. on, uh, South Africa already has some prescriptions around where, what you can invest overseas, for yes. example, yes. Um, and what you can invest in Africa. Has, has that been bad for us? Because no, you, so you could say it's an extension of, of kind of rules and regulations that we have. 100%, and, and it's actually a very clever point. We, we have um, Regulation 28, which is a form of prescription, rightfully so. We're allowed to take 30% overseas, but only 30%. So you have to invest 75% in South Africa. Yeah. Um, or 70% in South Africa. Which has buffered us recently when is, foreigners are taking out their cash. Exactly. And, and, and of your money, you're only in, allowed to invest 75% in equities, which means the rest must be in bonds, which is a certain type of funding to government in any case. 
Um, and, and so we have that regulation. I think that is a positive type of um, prescribed assets because it ensures that members diversify their assets. They get, um, in tough times, the, some assets do better than others. And, and that, that's a good thing for members. And, and hence we say the, the, we can have good forms of prescription and one must just ensure that we do the right thing mm. for the members. All right. Thank you for your time this evening. I think this debate will rage for a while. Uh, we'll chat again. That was the CEO of Alexander Forbes, Davi de Villiers.